All right, to make things print ready for critique. The first step was choosing the artwork, and I chose that artwork from my past projects in digital art. The easiest, I'm just going to go through this one more time because it is important. It helps you understand the difference between vector files like EPS files and raster files like PSD or JPEG or PNG, and now a new file type which is called a TIFF. So, how do you make something print ready? The most foolproof way to do it is to set up a new raster file that you then move your, your print ready image onto, whether that's your fantasy landscape, your fantasy creature, your, your refined storyboard, your logo, your shape composition exercise two, or your kind of line jumble line and clip art jumble exercise one. All of those are eligible for this midterm critique. You want to print your three best, most finished examples. And while we're waiting for Photoshop to fully open, what I'm going to do is start a new file in Photoshop that is eight inches by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Now, why do we print at 8 by 10 inches? I'm going to turn on my camera here and show you because this is about printing for a physical product. One of the strong disadvantages of digital art over traditional art is that what we work on is all in the computer. It's all just ones and zeros, and it can be very easily disorganized or lost. And it doesn't have the advantage of being a physical product that you have to store or you can put on your wall. And that is true up until the point that we print it. When we print it, we have a physical art product. And that's what we can submit to shows. That's what we can put in print portfolios. That's what we have to show for our efforts as a demonstration of our skills and our ideas. In order to make it look good and to present well, we need to use more than just good printing paper and good printing techniques, which really relate to understanding resolution and what I call the physical format, not just the digital format of the work, but we also need to protect those prints. And it doesn't look like my camera, it looks like it might come on now. To protect the physical works, you don't want them to get dented, you don't want them to get dirty, you don't want them to look like they're not cared for or important evidence of all of your time and investment. So to do that, we put them into mats. And a mat is an acid blocked, you know, protective barrier made out of paper. It's a four ply, usually a, a, a reg content paper, which means it's not made out of wood, it's made out of cotton or linen. The cheaper mats are not acid free, they are acid blocked, which means the only cotton and linen paper is on the outside and on the inside layer. And then the, the two plies in between are somewhat acidic and look a little bit more like cardboard. But I'm trying to get Photoshop out of the way here. Okay, here we go. So this is what one of our mats looks like. So why the, the size eight by 10? Well, when you're doing the resolution for your images and for your projects, you always want to think with the end in mind. And if we print an image to fill an 8 by 10 window and to look good in an 8 by 10 window, which often means floating it with extra white space, because let's say you're doing your landscape, your landscape's not necessarily going to look great in an 8 by 10 square. You want to float it within the space. And you want to make sure that it's a good resolution at this size. So this is what's called the physical format. The 8x10 window is an 8x10 opening in a larger mat. The standard size is 11 by 14 for the outside of the mat. And that way, a letter size piece of paper, which is what we print on, which is 8.5 by 11 inches, overlaps with the window. And we tape it in a way that protects it, there 
we go. That protects it from acid. So acid from, from wood, or even just from your fingertips, will slowly brown the paper, even if it's uh, cotton or linen paper. And so we use plastic tape, just scotch tape, not masking tape, because that is acidic. You can get fancy artist tape as well, but it has to be acid free. And then we hinge it at the top with two pieces of tape. And we keep those pieces of tape away from the corners. You just let it hang flat. And then you anchor it on the bottom with just one piece of tape. It's as simple as that. This is really flimsy. This is a print test piece of paper. It's not as, as heavy and as opaque and as clay coated as the actual ultra presentation premium matte paper we're going to use in our Epson printers. But the reason we tape it in that way, we don't tape the sides and we don't tape the corners ever, is so that as the ink dries and as the paper absorbs moisture over time, it doesn't warp and wrinkle within the mat. And so this is the way we present the artwork. Even a pretty flimsy piece of paper print can look pretty good on a gallery wall when it's protected and distanced from other visual distractions with the map. So that's what we need for the midterm, and that's what you're going to need for your final project. All right, so how do we get that ready? So remember that size, 8 by 10 inches. So what we do is we go to a program like Photoshop, a raster program, because you cannot print vectors with a standard printer. You would need a specialized kind of a laser cut printer, or you would need like a rapid milling machine or an embroiderer machine or something that, that works with vectors. So instead, we use fine art photo printers and their raster programs. So we have to set it up in a raster program like Photoshop or Photo P. And I'm just going to say File New, or I can always say Create New. And instead of resizing one of your past projects, you're going to bring that project in. So over here, I'm going to change this from pixels to inches. I'm going to make it 10 inches wide by 8 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Standard print resolution is, standard minimum print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. My preferred lab resolution is 350. It allows you to change your mind and make it a little bit bigger for a print should you need to and still have good resolution. So I say create with the white background, RGB color, 8-bit. And then I simply find the project I wanna bring in, whether it's an EPS logo, or whether it's my fantasy landscape or some other project. I'm going to show you what the fantasy landscape just so you can understand what makes sense. And then I bring in the best, most finished image of it. When you drag and drop it in, it's automatically going to center the image. And if its resolution and size is bigger than your image space, it's going to fill your image space. And it shouldn't take as long as my computer is taking this morning. I brought in my, my landscape and notice it went right to the edges. That's because my native resolution for this image was around 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. 
but notice that its proportions do not match 8 by 10. So if I were to print it at this size, it would be within the black matte window like I showed you on the video, but it would have a white bar on two sides of it, which would look pretty amateurish. So that's what I mean by floating the image. So when you bring it in, it's going to give you the, the option of placing it, right? With the transform box. And what you can do is hold down option and it will scale it towards the center of the page. And what I do is I hold down option and I scale it to where I think it looks good if this is the black of the mat and then this is a floating white space before I get to my image. It's like two mats or two borders around the image. One that's black, one that's the white of the paper. And then I'll just use my arrow keys and I'll nudge it up a tiny bit because the eye makes things fall. And so you want a little bit of extra space on the bottom. And that's true if it's horizontal or if it's vertical. Then I just hit return to place it to finish that size change. And now I need to flatten the image. So I say layer, flatten image. And then I need to save it as a new type of file. So I'm going to say file, save as. And I like doing it this way because there's no fear of, of your overwriting and accidentally flattening your original assignment. So I'm going to save this as a print ready file and I'll usually say uh, PR in the file name to remind me that I made this to be print ready. That's up to you, but I do require that you put your name in the file so it doesn't get lost. So I would do PR and then I would do the, I'm going to save it with that name to the desktop so I can see it. And the new file type I'm going to save it as is a TIFF. It's at the very bottom of your options. This is an archive file type. It can be opened by any program that can open images. And then we want under the TIFF options to use an image compression called LZW. LZW works with TIFF. It's a lossless compression format, which means it doesn't take any quality away, but it will keep its memory at a more efficient level instead of only ever saving as PSD files. So once that's done, you have your image. So now I have four that I've made print ready. You only need three, but you can print more than three if you need to. Then I can close this. I've saved it. And then you're going to go through our course homepage and through links to the Dropbox site. So here it is already signed in. It's through our class account. You're going to go to the folder that says one digital art class files. And then you're going to click on the folder that says one flattened TIFF files to print. The very first thing in that folder are instructions on how to make images print ready. So if you need it kind of written down, it will go through this how to resize, what the resolution is you want. And we are fitting for eight by 10 mats for this midterm. And then you will see folders for each of you. And I have one as well. And that's where I'm going to simply drag and drop. You can also click upload, but you can just drag and drop right into the Dropbox folder. And then those will show up on my print computer and I'll be able to print those for you. So what do you need? You need printing paper, that's ultra premium presentation matte Epson paper, that is eight and a half by 11 letter sized. You need at least three sheets of that. You need at least three black mats that have an opening that is eight by 10 inches. And then you need scotch tape, plastic tape. I have tape here, you can use the tape. I have mats here. If you need to purchase a mat from the lab, I will, I have a, some limited ones. Um, they're three dollars because that's they're two ninety nine at Hobby Lobby. You can also get them at Michaels. You can get them at Azels. You can get them at Jerry's Artorama. You can get them at Hurwitz. 